I'm here. I need my respect. The news is spread to All these years. And the view of the Alchemy Commission hasn't changed a bit. The tides come and go, but the ancient sea remains the same. For us, Vidyadara, there's nothing more nostalgic than our homeland. You're a Lofu native, Miss Lingsha? Yes. I grew up here. Listening to the sound of waves while researching prescriptions with my mentors and peers at the Alchemy Commission. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Everything changes, but somehow remains familiar. Just like you, Don Hung, I traveled far from home, and now I've returned. Seeing the familiar scenery brings back a hint of nostalgia. Uh, the view here would be even better without the Ambrosial Arbor. Oh, really? I think that towering tree looks pretty impressive. Even if it's impressive, it's a plague mark. The Sien Zhou have been fighting abominations for thousands of years. And now that the Ambrosial Arbor has been reborn, it's only natural for everyone to feel uneasy. Well, once a seed is planted, no matter how long it takes, it'll eventually sprout and bear fruit. In my humble opinion, the rebirth of the Ambrosial Arbor and the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were inevitable. The seed was already planted when the ancestors of the Sienjo sought immortality. <laughs> My bad. Well, since you went through the entire Ambrosial Arbor crisis firsthand, Dan Hung and Lieutenant Yan Ching, I'd like to discuss something with you. What would you like to discuss, Miss Lingxia? I was lucky enough to be chosen by the Alliance to come in and clean up all the old grime in the Alchemy Commission. Honestly, the Alchemy Commission is riddled with problems and has reached a point where fixing it seems impossible. I'm looking to remedy this problem, but was wondering if you could provide any insights. Well... Even though I'm a Vidyadarin like you, I'm an outsider, just like my companions here. I can't really say much about a remedy, but I do have a piece of advice, Miss Lingxiao. The Vidyadara and the Alchemy Commission on the Lofu have always been intricately connected. If you cannot distance yourself from these ties, Miss Lingxiao, Changing the situation within the Alchemy Commission may be quite challenging. I may not know about politics, but I do know that the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been operating within the Alchemy Commission for years. If you're determined to root them out, maybe you should discuss it with the General. I see. Thank you for your valuable insights. While the Lux Arrow from the Rainbow possesses unparalleled power to sever the Ambrosial Arbor, it can't sever mortals' desire to prolong their existence. Just like how the Cloud Knights can eliminate the remnants of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but are unable to calm the hearts and minds of the people within the Alchemy Commission. Our Sienjo forebears knew this well, and that's why they entrusted the duty of guarding the roots of the Arbor to the Vidyadara. However, the Vidyadara are still only mortal beings. Thirty years ago, my mentor served as Alchemy Commission's Cauldron Master. She recognized the emerging undercurrents and sought to cleanse the source of the disturbance. Unfortunately, even though she was skilled in the art of healing, she didn't understand the human heart or how to eliminate the sickness lurking within the depths of the Alchemy Commission. In the end, she was framed and exiled to the Juming. I was also implicated and had to leave the Lafu. And guess who arbitrated the case and handed down the sentence? None other than General Jing Yuan himself. Wh what? You heard it right. 
The ones responsible for the corruption in the Alchemy Commission are not just the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but even the Divine Foresight himself. Alas, why is your face turning pale, Yenqing? <sighs> Don't worry about it. I understand that when someone holds a position of power, they may sometimes have to make tough decisions. I won't hold any personal grudges against him. Besides, at our age, holding personal grudges is a luxury we can't afford. Lingsha, you're back! <sighs> I've been waiting ages for you! Yun Li! Why aren't you with your grandpa? What brings you to the Alchemy Commission? Well, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Yan Qing. <sighs> what a small world. You! You stole my sword! Give it back! <laughs> I see. Let's skip the introduction part then. I keep bumping into you. Are you stalking me or something? Of course not. Unlike you, Miss Yun Li, I have important things to take care of. You, on the other hand, seem to have all the time in the world to wander around without returning my sword. <laughs> Grandpa used to say that a sword reflects its master. I talked to your sword, and it told me that you've been distracted. You hesitate when you should strike, and you struggle to stay calm when your sword is unsheathed. <laughs> now that I see you again, I realize your sword was right. It wasn't me who took your sword. It was you who lost focus. Do you really expect me to believe that nonsense? I've been taking it easy on you because you're a guest from the Juming, but you're not taking the hint. Don't people from the Juming know you're supposed to return what you've borrowed? <laughs> just look at this flying sword. Even if I gave it back to you now, it'd just be taken away again in a few hours. You know the Cloud Knight saying, a Cloud Knight must never let slip their weapon, yes? Well, sure, I can give it back to you now, but on the battlefield, that's a whole different story. Flying sword. Fine! You don't have to give it back, because I'll take it back myself! Between these two, who do you think is tougher? Don't get me wrong, I'm just curious. Get ready to separate them. It is my first day at the Alchemy Commission. A brawl is definitely not how I imagine celebrating it. <laughs> well, since you don't approve, I won't draw my sword here. I didn't mean it in that way. Since you've already drawn your swords, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get to test one another, right? I've received reports that the Delves near the Alchemy Commission are still infested with abominations. Seems like my predecessors left quite a mess. So, if you two want to determine who's better, why not focus on them instead of each other? Hmm. Clearing out some abominations? Eh. Sounds boring. It's the Cloud Knight's duty to eliminate those abominations. You don't have to ask me twice, Miss Lingsha. I'll help you get rid of them. Oh, you think you're the only one who knows how to behave? If Lingsha needs anything, I'll gladly draw my sword and help her out. It's so heartwarming to see both of you being so sweet and caring. So then, shall we get going? Ever since the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were eradicated, their experimental abominations have been festering here. If you want a contest, I'll be the referee. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. <sighs> Lingsha, as always, 
You're still an expert in making unpaid work sound so noble and grand. <sighs> it's for your own good, little Yunli. While you desire to compete against each other, I don't want to see either of you getting hurt. That's really thoughtful of you, Cauldron Master. So, are you both ready? Ugh. Looks like my predecessors left quite a mess. Let me say it again. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. Be careful when you draw your swords and make sure you don't hurt each other. <clears throat> Can we start now, Lingsha? I weep for the departed. It did not fall. This is more than a battle. Half the work. Destined for oblivion. Nice, <laughs> like my friends. <laughs> Indulge yourself! <laughs> Joining the battle. Attack! I weep for the departed. It is my fault. Half the work. Still waters of oblivion. A one time enemy. Swords descend. <laughs> this is more than a battle. Set from the sea. In the mood for another beating? <laughs> I will claim victory for myself. Fight! I weep for the departed. It did not fall. I win, Miss Yun Lee. You got lucky. 
Why don't you just give me back my sword, sincerely apologize, and then go cry your eyes out to your grandpa? Consider yourself lucky that I'm not interested in your rusty sword, as I don't have the nasty habit of snatching other people's weapons. All you did was chop down a few monsters. Don't get carried away with yourself. <laughs> if you think you can just take this sword from my hand, go ahead and try. <clears throat> My young friends. However, both of you have shortcomings. One of you focuses on dodging and weaving, while the other relies on brute strength, trying to take down targets with a single strike. Who are you? Me. I am just a patient seeking medicine from the Alchemy Commission. A passerby, if you will. I thought I'd see my fill of impressive fights during the war dance. Yet here I am, able to witness a remarkable fight at the Alchemy Commission, of all places. Well, the Lafu is never short of surprises. However, I have a small suggestion for you. Why don't you settle this dispute fair and square in the war dance's ring? That way, you can resolve your differences with a proper duel and put your grudges behind you. Grudges? Uh, no, not at all. Yunli and I, we were just sparring. Hmm. <laughs> sparring? You summoned your flying swords and she swung her sword with full strength. No grudges between you. Hmm, I don't believe it. Aha! What brings you here, Lady Feishao? Have you finished your health consultation with the Dragon Lady? Feishao? Grandpa always talks about you. Could it be that you are... The Merlin's Claw of the Sanjou Yao Ching? Hmm. Looks like I'm quite famous on the Sanjou Lafu, too. Of course, everyone has heard of the great general, known to all and unbeknown to none. Great general? Isn't that title a bit too narcissistic? Uh, I don't like it. Ooh, I heard there's a dozing general on the Lafu, so I came up with a humble nickname for myself. The Lacking General. Lacking in worries, regrets, and rivals. Sounds much better, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a befitting title that sounds both humble and impressive. Now that the sparring session is over, Yanqing and Yunli, shouldn't you politely thank General Fei Xiao for her guidance and bury the hatchet? Uh, here's your sword. Keep it safe. Or it might get taken away again. By the way, we haven't settled the score yet. I'll defeat you fair and square next time we fight. This is how she apologizes? To... <sighs> now that I finally got my sword back, I should report to the seat of divine foresight. I'll take my leave, General Fischau. Oh, by the way, Miss Lingxia, if you've got some free time, I'd like to invite you to the Seat of Divine Foresight for a chat with General Jing Yuan. I think there's more to those personal grudges you mentioned earlier.
thanks for stepping in, General Feishao. Otherwise, I'd have had to knock them out with my incense. Not at all. Just doing what you asked. How about we call it even as payment for the healer lady's consultation? Sorry, but even a general needs to pay their bills. We don't do credit here. And let's not forget, you'd have been waiting decades for a chance to see the Dragon Lady if it weren't for me. Well, you can always send the bill to the Seat of Divine Foresight and say it's for mentoring those kids. After all, it was quite the effort splitting them up. I nearly had to get tough. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a spot and get some fresh air. Back already? You've met with Jin Yuan and wandered around for a few hours. So, what do you think? It appears that the Divine Foresight is using this war dance as a show of strength to convince everyone that the Law Fu is prospering after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. But... I know you're going to say but, right? But... The influx of people attending the war dance is like a breeding ground for disorder and rumors. One wrong move, and the Lawfu could be in a world of chaos. The Cloud Knights on the streets remain vigilant, so at the very least, General Jing Yuan is aware of this. As for other matters, I'm unable to say. I'd prefer to be excused from future meetings with generals. I'm just a military healer. And now, all of a sudden, I'm thrust onto the center stage, having cordial chats with two generals? My work doesn't lend itself to being in the limelight, either. Just stop whining. At least you're in one piece, right? Before getting in touch with General Jing Yuan, I wanted to put aside my assumptions and see his momentum. That includes the overall bearing of the Cloud Knights on the street, what people are saying, and how those close to him behave. The might of an army dwells not within its pawns, but within the force of its collective momentum. Recognizing this fact reveals the true measure of power. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening me, General. A perfectly clear statement turned confusing, thanks to your translation. <sighs> You've made me lose where I was now. Anyway, this is how I operate in battle, so you might as well get used to it. Are you treating General Jingyuan as your enemy? The longest serving general of the Xianzhou Lafu. Do you think he'd have only a few enemies? By the way, General. You met the healer lady, yes? Could you show me the medicine she prescribed you? Well, the healer lady couldn't do anything about my condition. She just told me to enjoy some tasty food. <sighs> so not even the famed healer lady could help? <sighs> Don't worry. I'll fulfill my promise and find a way to cure you. Actually, I've found some leads. Well, life and death, Zhao Cho. It's all predetermined. Upon starting my military career, I made a pledge that the rest of my life would be dedicated to being the Xianzhou Spearhead, hunting down the abominations of abundance till the end of my days. As long as I can fulfill that deep-seated desire, I don't care how long I live. You asked if I view General Xin Yuan as my enemy. No. My real enemy has always been myself. Enjoy some tasty food. So, what's for dinner tonight? Jeez. You really know how to read the room, don't you? You guys figure it out for yourselves. 
I'm due to catch up with an old war friend I've not seen for quite a long time. General who just dropped in out of nowhere? Oh, she's so awesome. I mean, when Yun Li swung that massive sword, she just casually blocked her attack with ease. And <sighs> mine too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But to go up against Yun Li is quite impressive, you know? That aura of heroism and grace. It almost makes me want to learn Sienjo's swordplay. You think so too, right? I agree. General Fei Xiao is indeed impressive. Well, I was actually hoping you'd give Yen Ching some praise. Thanks for the kind words, Miss March. The war dance is coming up. And I've been chosen to represent the Cloud Knights in the ceremony. I've had my fair share of defeats lately, and even though I know there are always more skilled swordmasters out there, seeing General Fei Xiao's skills today has made me feel a bit uneasy again. Don't underestimate yourself. After all, generals won't fight in the ring during the war dance. Just remember the state of mind you had when you single-handedly took on me and Blade, putting life and death aside. With that mindset, you can prevail against most challengers. I see. Thanks for the advice, Master Don Hung. By the way, now that today's events are over, General Jing Yuan wants to invite all of you to the Seat of Divine Foresight. He has something important to discuss. I bet it's about how to deal with the generals from the Yao Qing and the Ju Ming. I really don't want to get caught up in grown up games so soon. I just hope Generals Fei Xiao and Hui An can see the truth. We don't need any more chaos on the La Fu before the war dance. Earlier at the Palace of Astral, I introduced these guests from the Astral Express to you, Elder Hwai. But with all the people around, we only exchanged pleasantries. Now, I'd like to officially introduce them to you. These three braved great dangers, accompanying me to perilous places, defeating the chief culprit Vantilia, and uncovering the conspiracies of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. If you wish to know more, Please, feel free to ask us. Well, I skimmed through the reports about the Arbor's rebirth from the Master Diviner Hu Xuin. She's been summoned to the Yu Chui for questioning. There are a lot of doubts within the Alliance about this whole situation. But despite all that, I believe in you. Since you joined the ranks, you have repeatedly achieved remarkable feats. After the High Cloud Quintet, each went their separate ways. Despite the many criticisms within the Alliance, the Marshal still stood firm against the dissenting voices and entrusted the Lawfu to you. Over the years, you've served the Alliance with loyalty and wisdom. You've taken down abominations in Thalassa, rescued the Xianzhou Yuchui from a siege, and destroyed the demonic planet summoned by the denizens of abundance. I still remember those battles vividly. There are fools who doubt your loyalty. They're happy to see the divine foresight fail because it gives them some kind of sick satisfaction. 
They haven't achieved anything of their own, so they feed off the failures of others. But I've seen enough failures in my time, and I want to believe that your loyalty has never wavered. So, General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is the only one investigating the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis on behalf of the Alliance? <sighs> no, no. I am too. This old man's words always catch me off guard. The Marshal ordered me to come to this Yenzhou Lafu. But the document only says, attend the war dance and listen to Fei Shao's questioning. No need for that. You're all important witnesses. The Marshal is well aware of Jing Yuen's purpose in holding the ceremony, and understands the situation he is facing. She mentioned it because she believes both issues are important. Thanks for your kindness and sincerity, Elder Huayan. But is it appropriate to tell everyone here about the Marshal's orders? By introducing the Express's witnesses to me alone, aren't you aiming to discern the intentions behind both my actions and Fei Shao's? And whether there's any discord between us? Well, since I'm being open and honest with you, I encourage you young folk to do the same. As for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, all I need to do is listen. General Fei Shao will be the one asking the questions. To be honest, I'm more concerned about the timely start of the war dance. Oh, by the way, I've prepared a gift for the war dance. Yes, it's this case right here. There will be numerous contests and celebrations during the war dance, and the main event will be the Ringmaster's Challenge. The host will dispatch a skilled warrior to take on challengers from all over the cosmos, showcasing the excellent martial arts of the Sienzhou Lawfu. When you mentioned that the Astral Express would be attending the ceremony, I thought the High Elder of the Lawfu would be the ringmaster. <laughs> you humor me, Elder Huayan. The healer lady is just a young lady who knows nothing about martial arts. How can I assign her as the ringmaster? <laughs> I'm no match to you when it comes to joking. What's this box for? Why don't you open it, General Huayan? This sword case is intended for the war dance's award. It's empty now, but in a few days, a precious sword will be delivered and stored inside. I don't mean to boast about our skills, but this sword represents the pinnacle of the Ju Ming's craftsmanship. It has a legendary history, full of heroic tales from foreign lands. Tales that are too detailed to be summarized in just a few words. Since the delegation delivering the sword hasn't arrived yet, I'll just leave the case here for now. I've been wondering... Who would be worthy of such a sword? And then it hit me. I can award it to the champion of the Ringmaster's Challenge. The ceremony's champion is sure to be a perfect match for the sword. Moreover, I hear that Yen Xing is an excellent swordmaster, and that he will be representing the Lawfu as the Ringmaster. So it seems like a perfect gift for him. Thank you for your generosity. Elder Huayan. If you want to give me a sword, just say the word, Grandpa. No need to beat around the bush. 
You've got confidence, my girl. But I don't think you can best Yin Jing. I know you're all about swords, Miss Yun Li. It's just a shame that it's the sword that ultimately chooses its rightful master. Yeah. And even if someone gets their hands on such a precious sword, it'll probably end up in someone else's. The outcome of our duel at the Alchemy Commission is still up in the air. Since you're interested, why don't you represent the Xianzhou Juming and challenge me in the ring? That's exactly what I had in mind. Nobody knows who's gonna come out on top. It could be me, could be someone else. It'll probably be me. But whatever happens, it won't be him. We've been watching their drama. I'm dying to find out who beats who. Mm. Quiet down. We have other guests here. I've prepared this sword to add some excitement to the ceremony, not to have you two squabble. It's not a good look for the Alliance. While you both seem confident that you'll win, you need to remember there can only be one winner and one loser in the ring, which could lead to hard feelings. Actually, I have an idea. We don't know who the winner will be, and it might not be either of you. But if you're eyeing that prize, you'll need to work together. I want you to take on an apprentice who will take part in the war dance and win at least one match. How does that make sense? In my humble opinion, while a Cloud Knight is commendable by securing victories, it's even more so to pass on your skills and spread the way of swordplay. I'd be greatly pleased if this apprentice could represent the Express in the war dance by displaying their Cloud Knight flair and prowess. Well, Elder Huayan's idea is quite interesting. Imparting swordplay skills requires teamwork, and both the winner and the loser will learn a valuable lesson regardless of the outcome. The question is, whom should the two of them take as an apprentice? Uh, uh, huh? Who? Wait, me? I noticed just now that Miss March seemed quite interested in the outcome of your sword fight. So I thought, why not teach her the art of sword play? Uh, oh, wait, are you serious, General? Why am I being dragged into this all of a sudden? I've never practiced swordplay before. I'm a total newbie. You really think I can learn it? Well, you'll probably realize I have no hope and give up on me. And that'd be so embarrassing. Isn't this a perfect chance for you? I remember you mentioning that you wanted to learn some sword moves. Yeah, I did say that. But this is all happening so quickly, don't you think? Miss March is like a piece of jade in the rough, just waiting to be shaped. The war dance is the perfect opportunity to see what heights she can reach. I appreciate your kind words, General Yan. But won't teaching me swordplay be a waste of Yanqing and Yunli's time? They should be preparing for the ceremony. Plus, I heard that each swordmaster has their own special moves. What if they let something slip while teaching me? If everyone knows each other's tactics, won't that make it hard to catch people off guard during the war dance? <sighs> That's considerate of you, March 7th. But don't worry. It'll take you at least a decade of hard training before you can even start learning special moves. No need to freak out. A few Juming swordplay tricks will mean you'll be more than equipped. Uh, really? Looks like March's curiosity has been piqued. <laughs> the whole point is to know each other's moves. Defeating your opponent in just one move? How boring would that be? Plus, 
What really decides a swordsman's fate isn't some special move. It's the solid fundamentals. So Miss Yunli has already agreed. What do you say, Yang Ching? General, I... I haven't graduated yet. How can I be qualified to teach swordplay to others? Huh. So you're admitting your defeat, huh? If you're not even confident to teach, why don't you let me be the ringmaster instead? Yang Ching, teaching an apprentice is also a way of honing your own skills and gaining insights. You've been an apprentice for years. It's about time you looked at swordplay from another perspective. I see, General. Then count me in. Now that Yang Ching has agreed too, it all comes down to Miss March giving her nod. It's up to you to make the final decision, March. At least that way, I won't have to worry about you accidentally shooting me in the butt all the time. Hey, I've never missed my target. Then I'm on board. Thank you for your kindness, General Huayan. Great. Starting tomorrow, Yen Ching and Yun Li will teach you the basics of the Cloud Knight's swordplay. Yun Li and I will head out and purchase some sword practice equipment for Miss March. Think of it as a little initiation gift. <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, wait, you're giving me a gift? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Ah, General Huayan's gone. Wait, why does something feel off about what we talked about? Ah, uh, I think we strayed off topic. How did things even get to this point? Yeah, I brought you here because the General said he had some important matters to discuss. But how in the world did Yun Lee and I suddenly become Miss March's swordplay mentors? Because General Huayan wants us to stick around on the Lo Fu for some time. But from his point of view, we're no different from all the other tourists who may leave at any time. Since the crew's actions were mentioned in the Lo Fu's operations log were given to the Alliance, he probably wants to see firsthand if we're as capable as to report claims. Or, if we're just some made-up excuse to save face. And he wants to see it for himself during the war dance. Which is why he even dragged Yun Li into this. What began as a simple contest between two swordmasters has... <laughs> now evolved into you two collaborating to mentor March. Helder Huayan is... Still that tricky general. Who likes to give everyone a headache. My apologies. Truth be told, I invited all of you to the ceremony because I wished for you to act as my witnesses. Now I apologize for not disclosing this information earlier. In the coming weeks, I'll also invite all of you to a meeting with General Fei Xiao, where you may need to answer her questions and clear up any doubts she might have. So please, be prepared for the meeting. Don't worry, General. No matter what happens, I'm prepared to stay here as the Express's witness and answer any questions. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. General, I know there isn't much I can do to share your burden, but... Hmm? As the Lawfu Ringmaster, I won't let anyone defeat me in the war dance. <laughs> I know. The illustrious Merlin's Claw waiting for me? And for so long, too? 
It's quite an honor. It's been a while, General Feishao. It's been 30 years since we last saw each other. Right, Yukong? Yes. Back then, you were the vanguard of the Yao Qing's verdant knights, and I was a pilot of the La Fu's Rainbow Orbit Fleet. Who would have thought that upon meeting again, you'd be a general, and I'd have given up flying? It really does feel like a lifetime ago. Well, I wouldn't say I haven't seen you in 30 years. After all, your great victories are announced through the Yellow Bell Resonance System every day. So I'm well aware of your great feats. How's your health holding up? Still stable, I suppose. Do you still remember the medic who saved me in battle? That healer with the odd name and peculiar temperament. What was his name again? Was it Pichu? Or Katyo? Jiao Cho. He's been my retainer and personal healer, delegated by the Alchemy Commission from the Xianzhou Yao Qing. Over the years, he's dedicated himself to managing my condition. It's thanks to him that I'm still in good health today. Given my background, I'm happy to have made it this far. I'm relieved to know that you're safe and sound. Well then, since you and Elder Hua Yen are here, I imagine you must have received orders from the Marshal? As your friend, may I ask how the Alliance intends to punish the General of the Law Fu? The Arbor's rebirth has frightened the Elders who lurk behind the scenes. They fear the resurgence of abominations, much like what happened 30 years ago. Although the reports from the Law Fu explained all the details, we don't know if the Ruin Legion really invaded, or how exactly the Stellaron Hunters and the Astral Express became involved. This puzzle has many missing pieces. As you know, the fugitive Jing Liu, who mysteriously disappeared many years ago, has resurfaced. This time, she has brought along an outworlder in a coffin, claiming to offer the Marshal a method to fight against the Eons. The Law Fu Preceptor has also leveled accusations against Jing Yuan for neglecting the Alliance's principles. She asserts that Jing Yuan enabled the exiled Imbibitor Lune to re-enter the Law Fu, thereby unlocking the Lunarescent Deaths within Scale Gorge Waterscape, which in turn disrupted the Vidyatara's dutiful watch over the Ambrosial Arbor. It is for these reasons that I have come here to the Law Fu today. Well, duty calls. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned all of this to an uninvolved person. But since we once fought together, I didn't want to keep you in the dark. Perhaps pretending you didn't hear any of this would be for the best. I understand. I'm sorry. I was out of line. I know I shouldn't be defending General Jing Yuan right now, but... Well, you know how I am. The Law Fu has enjoyed centuries of stability since the end of the sedition of Imbibitor Lune, much of which can be attributed to General Jing Yuan's masterful strategizing. Unfortunately, for long life species, enduring through the ages always culminates in a failure that undoes all previous achievements, a moment that our adversaries relish. That's true. And that's why I'm also here for another purpose. To visit Hule. Hule? You mean that Hule? The Boris in Warhead? The same Hule who has been imprisoned in the Shackling Prison for over seven centuries? The nemesis of the Foxians who will never be forgiven and shall be imprisoned until the end of the cosmos. I can't quite remember the exact wording, but... Yes, the very same Hule. Usually, only emissaries from the Xianzhou Yao Qing Skyfaring Commission visit him once every century. Why do you have to visit him now of all times? The Foxians and the Alliance made a pact to combat the Abominations, aiming to achieve justice and free their kin. That werewolf monster is to be forever imprisoned in the dark recesses of the Shackling Prison facing unending retribution. 
Given the situation on the law Fu, those on the Yao Qing are concerned about Hu Lei's imprisonment. I'm afraid that the routine visit every century is no longer sufficient to ease their concerns. That's why I was sent here, to reassure them. <sighs> it's all bad news. Well, not everything. There might be a silver lining. Oh, by the way, I found some clues about the thing you asked for. Huh. Tell me more. The Verdant Knights followed the route you mentioned and discovered the wreckage of the Whistling Flame ship. Unfortunately, there were no survivors and no cargo. Hmm. However, someone had already been on the scene before we arrived. Our people? Or someone from the IPC? No, neither. You come. Have you heard of a person named Ron May? Still feeling sleepy. Mm, did I oversleep? Where did March and Don Hung go? Promise to General Huayan, after all. I woke up especially early so I can start teaching Miss March swordplay. Hey, why are you blushing, Master Yanqing? This is, uh, the first time someone has called me Master. I need to, uh, get used to it. Ahem. <clears throat> Let me make it clear. Swordplay training is about improving your body, mind, and strength. It's not a casual game you can master overnight. I promised General Huayan that I'd teach you Cloud Knight swordplay, so you can participate in the war dance and defeat at least one opponent. I'll do my best, but if you break your master's rules... Fine. A promise is a promise. Since I promised to study hard, I'll do my best starting today. Great! That's the spirit. March is in your hands now, Yen Qing. Don't be too easy on her. Don Hung, do you even have a heart? Did you lose it somewhere? By the way, where's Yun Li? I've found a quiet spot in the back garden of the Palace of Astrum for our first lesson together. Seriously? It's the first day and you two are already late? Why is everyone on the Lafu so laid back? So disappointing. Uh, uh, Master Yun Li, you're already here. Uh, sorry for keeping you waiting. Oh, wait. Were you trying to teach her in secret? <laughs> That's sneaky. <laughs> I'm just showing you what Lafu etiquette is all about. She might be my apprentice, but it's customary for the master to personally escort their apprentice to the place of learning. As the host, I'll be teaching Miss March the essence of Lawfu swordplay, after which she'll emerge victorious in the war dance ring. You won't be complaining about Lawfu swordplay then. Stand aside, rookie. Let me show you how we Ju Ming swordmasters treat their apprentices. Quickly, over here, Miss March. This is a reverse mentorship gift from me to you. I hope you put it to good use. Yen 
angel clothing? It's so beautiful! Sword practice requires precise movements. This outfit is tailored to fit perfectly and allows for smooth movements. I even added some small accessories. I put a lot of thought into it. You're awesome, Master Yunli! See? <laughs> See? How can you compete with me? I'll teach March 7th the essence of Ju Ming's swordplay so she can win the contest with my sword skills. Actually, I've prepared something too. Huh? You have a gift for me too, Master Yanqing? Since you want to learn swordplay, Miss March, you'll need suitable weapons. So, I went out of my way to prepare a pair of swords overnight. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to ask the craftsmen to customize the swords for you. But I did my best to choose ones that look nice and are suitable for a beginner. I hope you like them, Miss March. Thank you, Master Yanqing! <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you, Yunli? <laughs> the real competition is just getting started. I'm so lucky to have two great masters. But why does it feel like things are getting a bit weird? What do you think, Masters? Does this outfit suit me? Perfect. I chose it carefully. It's perfect for beautiful young swordswomen like you and me. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, let's get started with the training. The person next to me is a Cloud Knight instructor I brought in. For your first lesson, try exchanging a couple of moves with him. Uh, wait. We're having actual combat training for the first lesson? Isn't that a bit too intense? Well, I heard you have some experience with archery and martial arts. The first thing we're going to do is see just how strong your fundamentals are. Come on, step forward and strike with the sword in the most natural way you can think of. It's important for us to grasp your natural movements so we can decide where to start and what you need to learn. If you're ready, let's begin. Uh... <laughs> okay. Peach blossoms and divine sword descend. Are you ready? Uh -huh. No rush. Take your time. Well, I heard you have some experience with archery and martial arts. The first thing we're going to do. Come on. Him. All right. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. But please go easy on me. Then I apologize in advance, Miss March. Please have some tea. Pay close attention, Miss March. Lafu swordplay is all about being swift and agile in your movements. Yes, you! <laughs> Ignore him. Strength is everything. Right on time. Like this? Well done. How many can you block? How many of my moves can you block? Run, mountain, fall! Right on time. I could take ten of you. Better not underestimate me! <laughs> 
I'm starting to get the hang of it. Strike with heart. That's how a true master does it. Hey. With a true heart and focused mind. Here I come. <laughs> Do. Azure Dragon, White Tiger, eating less calm. Watch this! What are you mumbling about? Iron is hot. Uh, isn't this a uh, sword technique? Shouldn't I be saying something? Cool? Strike! Good practice. Here you go, Master! Right on time. Practice is over. March's quick hands and a flexible body. She's a perfect fit for practicing Lawfu swordplay. However, she lacks strength, and her strikes were a bit unfocused. But don't worry, it's totally normal for beginners. Once she starts practicing Dooming swordplay, she'll make heaps of progress. Given the situation, I believe Miss March should start by working on her, her strength. Footwork. Seriously, do you actually know anything about swordplay, or what? I could ask you the same thing! Dual swords require agility, so what's more important than footwork? Instead of focusing on her strengths, we should address her weaknesses. The drawback of wielding two swords is not generating enough force. What good is being quick on your feet if you don't have strength? It's not like we're dancing here. Skilled swordmasters know how to play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. Start with what you're good at, then tackle your weaknesses. That's the right way to learn. <laughs> you're quite the theorist, huh? Theorist? You claim to be able to talk to swords. So what does that make you? A lunatic? First lesson, and you're already arguing. Uh, come on, calm down, masters. I'll have to improve both my footwork and strength anyway, so it doesn't matter which one comes first. But it does matter. Just, Just listen, listen to, to me, me March 7. Pom -pom. We're all good here on the Sianjo La Fu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight Swordmasters, and I've been honing my sword skills with their guidance. One of them is Yen Ching, the boy we've all met before. The other is Yun Li, 
the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Juming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard sword training can be. I tried to drag him into this, but he refused. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yenqing wouldn't have it. And still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot. Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay and are literally fighting each other to teach me their skills. Thanks to their guidance, I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the Express, I'll definitely show off my skills and impress you all. Looking forward to your reply. Yours, March 7th. March's sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. But uh, perhaps I might have a shot at beating both masters in the ring? <laughs> Get real. You've only been practicing for a short while. How could that possibly happen? Your talent, Miss March, if you dedicate a few more decades to training, you might eventually be able to defeat Yun Li. <laughs> decades? But I'll be an old lady by then. No, no. <laughs> Can you believe it? March 7 has actually become a pretty decent swordmaster in such a short time. Now I understand why Grandpa always had a grin on his face while training me. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Masters! Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sienjo blades can improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? Or maybe a flying sword? There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. It's all about the skill of the sword master. Yenqing wields several flying swords, while I only wield one. But remember how I kicked his butt at the Alchemy Commission? First, you didn't kick my butt. Second, you'll never kick my butt. Third, how about we settle this right now and see who kicks whose butt? Yeah, I'm up for that. And if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of the war dance. Deal? Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. There was talk that the leading disciples of the Law Fu and Ju Ming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance, but for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train an apprentice of their own. <laughs> Turns out, the rumors are true. Tomorrow is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of teaching sword play here? Uh, you're... Um, you're... Oh, that's right! You're the pink-haired fox from the Yaoqing! Jiao Chou, 
the healer working for the general of the Xianzhou Yao Qing. Ah, got it. So, you are the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the Yao Qing. And you were trying to sneak a peek at our training? Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the general's orders to take care of some official business. I didn't mean to interrupt your training. I'll be on my way. If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? <sighs> well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering about what to learn, I couldn't help but wander over. From my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives, and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sautéing, boiling, and deep frying in cooking. They're just ways for people to show off their skills. How you use them really depends on the ingredients you're working with. It's like your sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, in other words, your apprentice's natural tendencies, with the right cooking method, by which I mean the teaching method that best suits her, she'll make double the progress in half the time. For example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried, cloud peppers when stir-fried, and yellow boulder beef when simmered. It's all about discovering the nature of the ingredients. Uh, I mean, apprentice. All this talk about food is making me hungry. Are you a healer? Why are you talking about food? Well, it's just a metaphor. The medicinal school I follow on the Xianzhou Yaoqing is called the Ranja School, that specializes in food therapy. So it's only natural that I know a thing or two about cooking. So, you're the general's cook? I'm a healer. <sighs> but anyway, a cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Fine. Call me a cook if you want. Seeing the way you're looking at me, it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts. But, in reality, I know a thing or two about killing. After all, the art of healing inherently encompasses both life and death. Why is this guy suddenly getting all serious with kids? Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my hand? No. This is called tumble dust, an extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. Ugh, is it poison? Well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, making them painless throughout the entire process. However, increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism, making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long-life species cannot escape its effects. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your hands. That may be so, but still. I prefer settling things with a sword than, you know. Huh. Looks like I did get you all wrong. You're not a feeble scholar, but a sinister and despicable one. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here, not persuading you to poison anyone. Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing or... Sinister. Picture this. Two individuals. The one standing is full of malice. The other lying down is honorable and righteous. How can the one who's lying down 
label the one standing as sinister. In the throes of combat, where life and death hinge on a singular moment, every idea fades into nothingness. The only thing that matters is staying alive. Surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth, be it integrity or treachery. In my eyes, their significance is negligible. Perhaps you've underestimated Yun Li and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young, but we've seen our fair share of war. <laughs> well, well. Then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than a contest. So why are you so focused on it? When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general, we Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray and slay enemies. Why do we have to swing swords in a ring just to please an audience? And this is how the general replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring is no different than on the battlefield, as your sword reveals the might of all Cloud Knights. The war dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we unsheath the sword without drawing blood, we not only display our might, but also the martial virtue of the Cloud Knights. That's quite an insightful statement, Yang Ching. Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Lawfu for quite some time, but I haven't had the chance to see the ceremony venue for myself yet. Hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. Would you mind showing me around? You want to see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet Yun Lee and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Well then, I'll give you all a tour. <laughs> 